Hello everyone. Foreign relations. Rajiv Gandhi set out to improve relations with the US and expanded scientific and economic ties with that country. His policies of economic liberalization and emphasis on information technology brought him closer to the US and other Western nations. Rajiv Gandhi is said to have used a direct private channel to Ronald Reagan, the US president, which led to the cancellation of proposed supplies of AWACS aircraft to Pakistan. Despite moving closer to the West, Rajiv Gandhi did not succumb to pressure on the nuclear non-proliferation issue which he linked as Indian policy has had always done to universal disarmament. In June 1988, at the 15th special session of the United Nations General Assembly, Rajiv spoke about a world free of nuclear weapons and put forward his action plan for ushering in a nuclear weapon free and non-violent world order. In 1986, the president of Seychelles faced a coup and sought India's help. The Rajiv Gandhi government authorized the Indian Navy to reach the coast of Seychelles to help avert the coup in a mission named Operation Flowers are Blooming. Then, in 1988, Maldives faced an attempted coup with whose perpetrator, perpetrator was apparently assisted by armed mercenaries of a Tamil secessionist, secessionist organization from Sri Lanka, the People's Liberation Organization of Tamil Elam PLOTE. The Maldives government sought India's help, upon which Rajiv Gandhi ordered the deployment of the Indian forces in an operation codenamed Cactus. The coup was averted. In 1987, India reoccupied the quiet post in the disputed Siachen region in what was termed Operation Rajiv. In December 1988, Rajiv Gandhi became the first Indian Prime Minister since Jawaharlal Nehru in 1954 to visit China. In 1986-87, there had been a standoff between Indian and Chinese troops at Sumdorangchu on the northeastern border. However, Rajiv Gandhi's visit led to better relations. He had a cordial meeting with Deng Xiaoping, who, though he was not the head of the state or head of government or general secretary of the Communist Party, was an all-important person in China. India and China signed two crucial agreements to establish a joint working group, JWG, to seek fair, reasonable and mutually respectable, mutually acceptable solution on the boundary question and a joint economic group JEG and agreed to expand and develop bilateral relations in all fields. The IPK of Misadventure Sri Lanka was faced with an ethnic conflict between the Sinhala majority and the Tamil minority who were inhabitants mostly of the northern part of the island. After Sri Lanka got independence from the British, the Sinhalese was imposed as the sole official language in the island country. The Tamils wanted parity on all fronts with their language given the same status as Sinhalis. There were protests when discrimination continued. Opposition to the official repressive measures took a violent turn. Soon, a number of militant groups were operating in the Jaffna Peninsula against the Sri Lankan armed forces. Over time, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam LTTE became the most prominent under Velupillai Prabhagran and took over the struggle using violence against the Lankan process as well as the civilians. Their demand had progressed from autonomy to liberation from the Sri Lankan government to form an independent Tamil state. Though it was an internal affair of Sri Lanka, the events in Jaffna raised tensions in Tamil Nadu where many felt close to the Sri Lankan Tamils. The LTTE used Tamil Nadu as a refugee and the state government was sympathetic to their cause even as the central government kept quiet. It is believed that the governments under Indira Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi surreptitiously supported the Tamil militants. When the Sri Lankan forces responded with brutal force and blockaded the Tamil majority district of Jaffna, Rajiv Gandhi first tried to resolve the problem diplomatically. But the siege continued. 
India hoped the Sri Lankan government would be amenable to India sending relief supplies to the beleaguered Tamils by sea. A flotilla of Indian ships were relief with relief supplies were locked by the Sri Lankan Navy as they approached the territorial waters of Sri Lanka. On June 4, 1987, the Indian government orders relief supplies to be airdropped into the area on humanitarian grounds in what was called Operation Puma Lime, also Eagle Mission 4, after warning Sri Lanka not to try and stop the planes. India was criticized by some nations for the action even as Sri Lanka accused India of blatant violation of sovereignty. The US expressed regret over the incident but added no further comment. India wanted the airdrop to send a message the siege of Jaffna was lifted and there was a declaration of ceasefire. Indo Sri Lanka Accord 1987 In July 1987, Sri Lankan President J.R. Jayavardhane asked Rajiv Gandhi to mediate in the island country's ethnic conflict. As a result, the Indo Sri Lanka Peace Accord was signed by the two leaders in Colombo on July 29, 1987. Incidentally, it was on the occasion of this visit to Colombo that Rajiv Gandhi was assaulted by a Sri Lankan in the guard of honor held for the Indian Prime Minister in what seemed an attempted assassination. Rajiv Gandhi escaped serious injury. The peace accord was perhaps too ambitious in its scope, seeking to address three contentious issues, strategic interests, people of Indian origin in Sri Lanka and the rights of Tamils in Sri Lanka. Under the terms of the agreement, the Sri Lankan government would devolve power to the Tamil majority areas, the Sri Lankan troops would withdraw to their barracks in the north, and the Tamil militants would surrender their arms. Besides the LTTE being dissolved, Tamil was to be designated an official language of Sri Lanka. Significantly, the Tamil groups were not party to the talks that led to the agreement. It was under the accord that the Indian peacekeeping force IPKF was sent to Sri Lanka's northern and eastern provinces where the Tamils were in majority to guarantee and enforce the cessation of hostilities between the Tamil specialist groups and the government. The LTTE, however, refused to surrender arms and began threatening Tamils who opposed the militant group. The IPKF and the LTTE became involved in a military confrontation. The IPKF was working under severe strategic constraints. The scene of action was an island nation. The war was an unconventional one being waged against a group that had strong emotional connections with Tamil Nadu. And the Indian intervention evoked a hostile reaction from the Sinhalese as well as they felt their sovereignty to be undermined. Finally, IPKF captured the LTTE headquarters in Jaffna, but the militants retreated into the jungles from where they used guerrilla tactics to keep the forces at bay. A large number of Indian soldiers died and the cost of the operation was huge. Back in India, the pressure was on the government to recall the force. In the end, the IK IPKF misadventure was to be the cause for the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi on May 21, 1991, during his election campaign in Tamil Nadu. At Sri Purambudur, a woman bent to touch his feet and exploded an explosive device attached to her. The suicide bomber belonged to the LTTE and her action was in retaliation of India's role in Sri Lanka. Like, share and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you. Bye.